I get a lot of questions about doing looping animations in Storyline, so I want to show you how to do that. So let's preview this real quick so you can see how it works. So we've got a circle and you can see it's just looping. So that's what I want to do. So I just want to have a looping animation. So the way we do that, let's go ahead and start with the blank slides. I just added a circle to the screen. And we need to put a motion path animation on that. So I'm going to add a motion path. So go to Animations, Add Motion Path. And we're just going to do a circle. So you can see it created the motion path for us. And this is fine. Now when you create a motion path, it's going to assume an animation. So by default Storyline, if you notice here at the triggers, um, by default Storyline just creates a Move Animation Trigger. So move the oval one, which is this blue orb, right? on Circle Motion Path 1 when the timeline starts. And you can always change that. You can have a variable or buttons or whatever you want to trigger that. So by default it's just going to trigger when the slide starts. And that's okay for this demo. So what we want to do is we want to loop it. Because if we preview this, we'll notice it's going to go around but it just goes down one time. So we want it to keep going so without having to re-trigger that. So let's talk through what we're doing. So what do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I always talk through the triggers. So I want to move this on the motion path when, and that's the tricky part, right? So open up your trigger wizard. And if you're just getting started with Storyline, I always tell people talk through the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? So the, the what is your action. And we can see there's your action here. And the when is what's going to trigger that. So the action, if you're not familiar with Storyline at all, say, what do you want to do? Click on the drop down and then look at some of the things that you can do. And that kind of, most of it makes sense. If you're just getting started, you're probably not working with variables and JavaScript and those things. But most of the common stuff's up here and most of these kind of make sense. So what do I want to do? I want to move an object. So in this case, it's the circle right here, right? So I want to move this circle or the oval on, well we only have one motion path. When, and again this is, I don't know anything about Storyline. i got to figure things out. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? What are my when options? What's going to trigger that? And then you can see these all kind of make sense. Now in this case it's animating. So it's going to come around and we want to re-trigger it when that animation completes. So as soon as the animation completes we want it essentially to restart. So what we're going to do is move oval one on circle path motion on circle motion path one when animation completes and then which animation the object which is the oval one on circle motion path one so if we read through that we're going to move oval one the blue orb here on circle motion path one so we're going to move it here when the animation completes so it's going to have that initial trigger and it's going to animate, and as soon as the animation is complete, it's going to re-trigger it, and it's just going to keep looping. It's going to re-trigger, re-trigger, and so forth. So go ahead and hit OK. Now if we preview this, what should happen is the first trigger kicks in, it animates it, and then it's just going to keep looping. Now you'll notice that it's kind of slowly starting, and then it slowly eases out. So it's easing in and out. That's, a, that's an animation feature. It kind of softens the animation. In this case we don't want to do that so we want it just to continue. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we're going to select our motion path here. You'll notice up in the animations tab you have motion path options. And one of them is easing and you have this direction, like the easing in and easing out. In this case we're going to do none. So now it's not going to have any easing and it's just going to loop continuously. And there you go. And so now it's just animating continuously. So you can do other things on the screen. Um, so there are a lot of use cases for looping animations. A lot of people use them for like moving backgrounds or making it look like uh, objects or kind of going across things like cars on the street or people walking in hallways. But that's kind of the essence of it. And just jump in the community. There's a lot of threads on looping animations, a lot of good examples, and some downloads as well.